Good morning. Welcome to church this morning. My name is Pastor Jordan. Some of you are tuning into this because this is your church home, and you would usually be in the building here with me to worship together, uh, but you're connecting this way online, and hey, I appreciate that you're here. Uh, some of you, maybe you were just scrolling through Facebook or browsing YouTube, and you came across this, and you're just watching for a few minutes. Well, welcome. I'm glad that you're here too. Uh, no matter why you're here, I believe it's not an accident that you're tuning into this and listening to this and participating in worship with us. God has a purpose and a plan for your life, and it's not an accident that you're here hearing this. So jump in, be part of this with us, uh, sing along to the songs, follow along as we're reading, working through stuff together this morning. I just want you to know that I'm really glad that you're here and that Jesus loves you and has a plan for your life. A few things we have coming up this week. Uh, Tuesday afternoon, we're going to try some online bingo. Uh, we want you just to come for free. We're going to give you some instructions to make your own bingo card. And then we got some prizes for people that win. Uh, so watch our Facebook channel and our website, nippon.church, for information on that on Tuesday. On Wednesday, Pastor Chantal, my wife, is starting a women's online group. Uh, so again, you'll want to watch that. Uh, send us a message if you're like, hey, I don't want to miss that. We'll make sure you get the link to join in with that online discussion. Uh, and no matter what's going on in your life, if you're like, Man, I just wish somebody would pray for me, or somebody would phone me, or I could be connected in some way that I haven't been yet, send us a message or phone the church. Uh, we would love to help you uh, be connected. Even in a season like this where we're so, uh, social distancing and maybe isolating ourselves on purpose. You don't have to be alone, and we would love an opportunity to be your community, be part of your life, part of your journey of faith. One of the things that our church family here loves to do is we love to follow Jesus' example of generosity. Uh, so if you would like to do that, if you would like to partner with us in financially making the mission of the church possible, uh, one of the ways you can do that uh, instructions will be on your screen here, but just text the word GIVE to 902-200-1188. That'll get you set up with our digital giving information. Uh, another thing that you can do is if you are familiar with e-transfers and that's something that you use in your online banking, uh, you can send an e-transfer to office at nipowin.church. Uh, so you're welcome to participate in that, but there's no obligation for you to do that. Uh, before we sing a few more songs here, I want to read to you from Psalm chapter 5. Uh, David, he wrote this, and he said, O oh Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. God, listen to my cry for help, my God and my King. For I will never pray to anyone but you. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my requests to you, and I wait expectantly. So God, as we pray this morning, we know that you hear us. God, we're waiting expectantly for you to come into our life with your presence and your love, for you to flood us with yourself. My God and my King, would you hear the prayers of your people? Would you meet with us in worship with your presence? In Jesus' name we pray.
Isn't it amazing to worship God? I hope that wherever you are when you're watching this and connecting with this, that you are experiencing the presence of God in your life as you praise him and worship him. But no matter where you're at, if you're at least a little bit like me this week, uh, you've probably been feeling a little bit emotionally disoriented as your normal rhythms of life are disrupted and the things that you would usually be doing, you're not doing, and things are all different. Maybe you're, you're feeling a little bit of uncertainty in your life. That's kind of where I've been at. Uh, social distancing is disruptive to our life. Uh, one of the things that my family looks forward to the most is our gatherings as a church. And I'll just be a little bit honest, it's kind of strange right now. Uh, it's strange to me when I'm practicing my messages to an empty room all by myself. Uh, it's even more strange when there's the eight of us that are in this room right now, and there's video cameras rolling, and it's a little bit odd. Uh, my kids aren't in the room. Usually my kids are part of this, and they look forward to church together, probably more than any, anything else that they look forward to. They're separated in a different room right now because our four kids put us over the total right now, so they can't be in here. You've probably found that wherever you go, there's a little bit of tension in the air. Even, in, even as you walk into places that are probably just about empty, it's like tensions are just a little bit high because things are unusual and there's uncertainty going on. Events are canceled. Uh, grocery stores aren't empty of people, but some of the shelves are a little bit more empty. Uh, maybe your kids are at home for a longer period of time than they usually are, except for summer break. Maybe it started off, and you're like, this is going to be great. We're going to have so much fun together and do all these cool things. And now it's like, ugh, get out of my space, kids. Whose idea was this anyways? The stock market is a little bit more turbulent than it usually is. Businesses are closing. There's some serious economic concerns that maybe are weighing on your life more so than they usually would. Many of you are probably in a really tough spot. Some of you are maybe sick. Some of you are maybe really sick. Maybe some of you had a job that you loved and now you don't have any job. Maybe your bills are piling up faster than you thought they could. Maybe you're, you're at home together with your spouse and you're realizing that there's some cracks in our marriage that we've just been kind of glossing over, but we're realizing this is a big deal. You need to realize that, but then realize that we have an opportunity to do something about that. But in all of this, there's some uncertainty, and maybe you're feeling right now that that your life is in a little bit of a wreck, and our world is in, is in a little bit of a wreck. And that's difficult. The, the title of this message this morning, uh, this, this message is for you. Uh, when you're feeling anxious, when you feel alone, when you feel afraid. Before we look at the Word of God together this morning, I just want to pray before we get there. God, we recognize that so many of us right now are feeling alone and anxious and afraid. And God, you have things to say to that. So God, as we work through this this morning, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to every person wherever they are, whenever they're connecting to this and watching. God, I pray that you would speak through my words and beyond my words, God, you would help every person to hear your voice and know what you would say to them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, there was an online conversation this week, because that's where so many of our conversations are happening now, right? Even for those of us that hate online connecting, when that's all you've got, you appreciate it even more, right? But there was this conversation. The single mom was talking about how she'd lost her job, and things were just really difficult, and she didn't know how it was going to work out. She was free, feeling anxious and alone and afraid. And somebody else joined into the conversation. They were obviously somebody 
who was trying to follow Jesus with their life. Uh, they said, just trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And you can just feel the tension in that conversation rise a little bit. Because the, the single mom is going, that's good advice and sounds great. I'm trying to do that, but how? How when my whole life is falling apart and things are so difficult and I don't see an end to this and I don't see my way out, how do I trust God? And maybe you're feeling that. I want to trust God, but how? What does that mean when there's no paycheck to trust God? How do I do it? It's kind of like when somebody's going in for surgery. The, the difference between major surgery and minor surgery. Uh, you know, when, when you're going in for surgery, it's minor surgery. Because ha- it happens all the time. These doctors operate on thousands of people every day. and You're going to be just fine. It's minor surgery. Don't worry about it. But when it's me going in for surgery, it's major surgery. Because it's me, and I feel it. And it's easy for me to tell you that it's minor for your life when you're heading into it. But, but I feel it when it's for me. Just like that, it's easy to tell somebody, trust in the Lord. Just trust God. Just trust God in the middle of your difficulty and loneliness and anxiety and frustration. Just trust God. But when that's happening to us, we ask different questions, and we go, well, how? How? That sounds great, and I want to do that, but how? When we're depressed, and financially stressed, and our marriage is struggling, and our kids are rebelling, we want to know how. God, how do I trust you in these things? When we're sick, when we've spent a decade saving up for reti- retirement, and we just saw 30% of it disappear in three days. When our job's cut, and we're afraid for our future, and we go to the grocery store and there's no toilet paper on the shelves. I'll give you a moment, because that was supposed to be a little bit funny. And I can't see your reaction, so I hope you laughed. At least just a little bit. Uh, you know, everybody's not shaking hands because of the coronavirus, and we don't want to get sick. Uh, some people aren't shaking hands because there's no toilet paper. That's just wise. I'm making light of that. I haven't actually met anybody that's out of toilet paper yet. But it's the thing that we talk about, right? Anytime life is painful, we feel anxious, we feel alone, and we feel afraid. I wish that my first reaction was that I'd go to the Word of God and I'd talk to Him about what was going on and I'd find the ways to trust Him. But honestly, that's not always my first reaction. Often I try and figure it out and work my way through and find a way to solve the problem. But when I realize the advice that I'd give you when I'm preaching this message to you is to go to the book of Psalms and read the word of God and find what he says about how to trust him. And then I go and do that. I find the help that I need. So what I want to do for you in this message is I want to show you some verses that might help in in growing and trusting God. So we're in the Psalms this morning. All of the verses that I want to read to you this morning are in the book of Psalms. But starting in Psalms chapter 9, verses 9 and 10, David and all the psalmists have so much great things to say about trusting God. This is David. He says in verse 9, The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Isn't that good to know for us? The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed. God is a stronghold in times of trouble. Then he goes on and he said, Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Those who know your name trust you. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because who of us trusts somebody we don't even know their name? So what's God's name? As a comedian, I don't know his name, but he said uh, when he was 23 years old, he realized for the first time that God's last name doesn't start with D and doesn't rhyme with slam it. I'll give you a moment with that one. That's supposed to be funny too. 
But what do you call God? Because what we call someone tells us a lot about the relationship that we have with them. Uh, my wife, Chantal, is sitting here. I call Chantal honey and sweetie and darling and other things that I'm not going to tell you and that you're not allowed to call her because she's my wife and because our relationship is special and different than any other relationship. What do you call me? You know, some of you might call me Jordan Gatsby. <laughs> People in the room are laughing at me here. <laughs> they might call me something else. Uh, if you call me Jordan Gadsby, you've probably read my name somewhere. Maybe you're watching online and you saw my name on the screen, but you don't really know me. Uh, some of you call me Pastor Jordan. That likely means that you're either part of our church or you are familiar with me because you've seen the church, or you're familiar with what I do, you at least know what I do for a living, and you, you would call me Pastor Jordan. Uh, some of you might just call me Jordan. Uh, likely that means that we're friends, and we've interacted a little bit beyond kind of a professional or just a passing relationship. Uh, one person that I know uh, calls me my young friend. Uh, they're a little bit older than me. It's one of those relationships where sometimes I'm not sure what to call them, and they're not sure what to call me. So sometimes they call me my young friend. Uh, sometimes they call me Pastor Gadsby. Kind of got both ends of that going on. We'll figure out where in between those things we land at some point. Uh, there's a few people that call me Gads. Uh, if you call me Gads, it's probably because we started being friends over 20 years ago. Uh, that's not around too much anymore. People don't seem to call me that. My grandpa called me Jordy. Uh, but there's, there's four people who call me Daddy. If you call me Daddy, it's probably because I've read you bedtime stories. I love you more. I've given you more hugs and kisses than just about anyone except my wife. Because the relationship is different. So what we call someone tells us a lot about the relationship. And what you call God tells a lot about your relationship with God. Do you know him? What do you call God? See, some people call him the big guy in the sky, or the big man upstairs. But it's probably because they don't know him very well. And Jesus called him Abba, which is Aramaic, it means like daddy, or father, or papa. What we call God reflects how well we know him. David, in Psalm chapter 9, verse 10, that we read at the beginning, said to God, God, those who know your name trust in you. So what's his name? I want to show you in several psalms how often the psalmists say to God, you are. They're, they're describing attributes of who God is, metaphors for who God is, and they're names of God that represent relationship and how they view God and how they relate to him. So I want to show you some of the you are's of God and help you to understand who God is. In David the first prophetic psalm that he wrote, Psalm chapter 22, verse 19. It says, But you, Lord, do not be far from me. He said, You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. And Paul in the New Testament, he echoed this, and he said, When you are weak, God's strength is made perfect. See, every weakness that you have, every Weakness that you have is an opportunity for you to experience God's strength, God's presence, God's power. When you're overwhelmed and it seems like everything going on is just, it's too much, give God your weakness and God will give you his strength. Who is God? God you are my strength. Some of you that 
have experience working out or exercising lots. You might be familiar with the feeling of starting off. Like maybe you're going for a run and you're starting off or you're, you're lifting the weights and you're starting off. And you're, no problem. I got this. I could do this all day. No problem. Miles and miles I got in me. I could do this. And you get towards the end. And it's like you're giving every possible effort that you've got into it, like more effort than you had at the beginning, but you're hardly going anywhere. You're like dragging your feet. Your muscles are burning and you've got nothing left to give. You're putting all of your energy and all of your strength and it burns and it hurts, but you're not gaining any ground and there's nothing, you can't push anymore. You've got nothing left to give. That's when God comes and says, give me all of your weakness. You've pushed the weight as far and as hard as you can push it. But God just lifts it off like there's nothing left on there. When we give God our weakness, he gives us his strength. God, you are my strength. Psalm chapter 31, verse 5. David said, I entrust my spirit into your hand. Rescue me, Lord, for you are a faithful God. People will let you down. Circumstances will disappoint you. I might let you down. The economy will let you down. Sometimes you might even let yourself down. But even when we are faithless, God is always faithful which is really good news. Because if you're like me, you've failed a million times over. But his faithfulness has never failed me once. God, you are my strength. And God, you are always faithful. Psalm chapter 65, verse 5. David says, You faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds, O God, our Savior. You are the hope of everyone on earth, even those who sail on distant seas. God, you are my hope. See, our hope is not in a person. Our hope is not in a leader. Our hope is not in a government or a system or in medicine. Our hope is the one all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God who spoke the world into being. Isaiah said that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They'll soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. See, those who know God's name, know him personally, know him intimately, Trust him. God, you are my strength. God, you are always faithful. God, you are my hope. And the psalmist in chapter 75, verse 1, says, We thank you, O God. We give thanks because you are near. People everywhere tell of your wonderful deeds. And James in the New Testament tells us that every time you draw near to God, he draws near to you. God is not a far-off, distant, uninvolved God. He is a loving, caring, compassionate God who never leaves. What do you call God? God, you are my strength. God, you are always faithful. God, you are my hope. And God, you are always near. Psalm 86, verse 5. David says, O Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. God, you are so good so ready to forgive, and so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. God isn't just good. God 
is so good. Jesus said that even the unrighteous give good gifts to their children. He says, even more, your heavenly Father who is so good will give good gifts. One of the ways that we've said this through the centuries in church circles, who said God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. When I first heard that, it was in the little church that uh, I first started being discipled as a follower of Jesus. Uh, there was this old guy, his name was Curly, and I honestly don't know if that was his real name or if that was just what we called him. Uh, but Curly would say, God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. And I always heard that as a little bit of a churchy language, cliche kind of statement or saying. But something really cool when Curly would say that it was that it took on a new meaning. Because it wasn't just something he said. It was a foundation for his life. And you could tell that when he said it, it meant so much to him, and that was how he lived and how he saw everything, that God is good all the time, and all the time in everything, God is good. See, good all the time means that when the economy is strong, God is good. And when it's not, God is good. And when you have a job, God is good. And when you don't, God is good. And when you're healthy and strong, God is good. And when you're not, God is good. And when things are easy, God is good. And when they're hard, God is so good. See, God isn't just ready to forgive. He is so ready, which is great news. Some of you Maybe you would usually, at this time, have gotten your family ready and into your vehicle and driven to church together. And on the way here, you have a fight. And it's like, just put your smiles on. We're going to church together. But now you can just gather your family together and watch wherever you're at. But maybe even that was too much. And it's like, kids, get down here. It's time for church. And if it was a fight, all you have to do is say, God, forgive me. And maybe it was way worse than that. And it wasn't just a fight with your family and a stuff going on in your life. And you're like, again, I did the thing that I promised everybody, including God, that I wouldn't. The good news is that God isn't just ready to forgive. He's so ready. And if we confess our sins, he's not just ready. He's so ready to walk into your situation. And he's so ready to forgive you. And God is not just loving. He's so loving. Because love isn't just what he does, it's who he is. And there's nothing that you can do or I can do to make him or force him or convince him to love you more or to love you less. Because God is love. And that's who he is. What do you call God? Do you know him? God, you are my strength. God, you are always faithful. God, you are my hope, and you are always near. You are so good. You are so loving. You are so ready to forgive. In the last psalm, in fact, the last you are psalm in the Bible, Psalm 118, verse 28. And David says, you are my God. I will praise you. You are my God. I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. I'd, I'd heard of God growing up, but I didn't know God. He was my grandma's God. Then when I was a teenager, and I was lonely, and I had all these mixed up and mixed together ideas of God and faith, I found myself in a place where he was so real. And he b went from being my grandma's God, or a distant God that I didn't know, to being my God. And I went and I bought a Bible. And I started to read and to learn about who this God was that I was now making my God. And my trust in him started to grow. So I want to ask you, are you anxious? Are you hurting? 
Are you afraid? What I want you to do is to call on him. Cry out to him. If you're hurting, tell him. If you're angry, mad at life, or mad at God, tell him. Yell at him. Unload on him. He can handle it. I'm convinced that he'd rather you be honest with him than have you walk away. If you're afraid, cry out. If you're anxious, cast your cares on him. He cares for you. How do you trust in God? How? When you feel alone and anxious and depressed, there's no money in the bank, no groceries in the house. Those who know God's name, trust in him. What we call someone tells us a lot about the relationship. What you call God reflects how well you know him. So what do you call God? When you are weak, God is our strength. And when the world feels unstable, God is always faithful. And when you are anxious and unsure, God is your hope. And when you feel isolated and you're hurting and alone, God is near. When you mess up, you fail, you sin, God is so good. And God is so ready to forgive. And God is so full. He's so full of unfailing love for you. Because God loves you. He sent Jesus for you. He didn't just shout his love from heaven. He showed his love on earth. When you know Jesus, you can declare that God is my God. And if you don't know that, I want to invite you to, to comment on the video. Just talk to God where you're at. Call out to him. Reach out to him. Because he is near to you. And he wants to have you draw near to him and know him. He wants to fill your weakness with his strength, your emptiness with his love. And all it takes is a conversation with him. Because he's been waiting for you. And it's no accident that you're connecting here with church this morning. And that you're connecting with God. And that what you're feeling right now is his presence and his power drawing you to himself with his love. Because he wants you to know him. So what we pray is we pray that God, I believe that you are God that you are loving, and that you know my life, and that you want me to come to you. So God, I, I'm here. I'm yours, God. I surrender myself to you. Take my weakness, God. Take my emptiness. Take my lack of faith and my lack of hope about the future. God, replace that with your hope, with your love, with your strength. God, I've sinned, and I, I confess that, and I, I accept and I receive your forgiveness that you offer to me because of Jesus on the cross in my place. God, fill me with your presence and your love. In Jesus' name. God, every person watching, worshiping with us the next few minutes, I pray that in their home, in their car, wherever they're, they're at, I pray that you would fill their life with your presence and they would know your love and your word to them as you call them to yourself in jesus name amen i invite you our, our team is going to lead us in a couple of more songs before we finish this service here uh, you're invited to sing along to just be in the presence of god as you listen and watch and participate thank you so much for joining in
Father, thank you for who you are. Just be caught up in who you are. And all the things that you have done for us, we thank you, God. We thank you that even if things are good, you are so good. And if things are bad, you are still so good. Thank you for your faithfulness. That you are with us through all things. God, that the gift of your son gives us hope and future. So good.
Thank you so much for joining in with us. If you need somebody to connect with you, if you need some kind of practical help with groceries or something going on in your life, send us a message if you're connecting with us on Facebook or phone the church office, uh, 306-862-4342. Uh, we would love to be part of your community and help you through whatever you're going through. Uh, I want to pray for you. Uh, if you want somebody to pray for you in person, again, reach out to us. We would love to connect with you like that. But Jesus, I pray for every person watching this, that you would fill their life with your goodness, God, because you are always good. With your love, because you are so full of unfailing love. And God, give us hope for the future like only you can. Meet us with your presence. Help us to draw near to you. And you promised, God, that you will draw near to us. I pray that we would experience that. In Jesus' name.